All right, so now we're going to start with a really nice um, spinal stretch, a cat stretch, which is one of my uh, favourite stretches. Um, just for releasing out the lower back um, and all through the spine. So basically, on all fours, hands on the shoulders, uh, knees underneath the hips, and then you're just going to drop the waist down, roll the shoulders back, and then at the same time, tilt that neck forward, looking at the wall in front of you. Excellent. And then opposite direction, we're going to lengthen out through that neck, arch up through the back and articulate through the spine. Now we've got all of our weight through the fingers. And you want to think about relaxing the shoulders down away from the ears. It's a real tendency to kind of keep them scrunched up. So to feel that spine peel away, all the muscles from that mid back right down to the lower back. And then we release that neck out as well. So we're loosening through the waist as we drop down. And then on the way back up, I like to imagine it's like a cat on a hot tin roof. So really lift that back up towards the ceiling, open up the big back. And release it back down. And we're going to do two more here. So you kind of tuck the hips forward, the pelvis under, as you release up. Just loosening through those elbows. And last one. Releasing back down. All right, quick try those shoulders. Uh, next, we're going to move on to some four-point kneeling glutes, which are obviously are very safe um, for our pregnant ladies um, and also for kind of shoulder mobility issues. But I'll give you a couple of options, um, advanced options as well. So once again, back onto your four-point kneeling position. Um, what we're going to do first is just do an opposite arm, opposite um, leg combination. So we'll reach one arm forward, kind of like stooping in, and at the same time extend the opposite leg back. So you'll see I've got a nice pointed toe and a long leg. Relax the shoulders. Good. Reaching forward, try to keep that lower back really nice and flat. And then down. So you really, really need to engage with the waist on this one so that the back doesn't sway. And squeeze through the glute as you lengthen out through that back leg. Good. So we're warming up the deep core muscles. And now we'll start to do a couple of opposite arm to opposite leg and knee tucks. Now you can of course stay with the first version, absolutely. That's challenging enough. Or you can keep these opposite tucks going. Now relax through this shoulder so you're not taking too much weight through it. You want to keep your neck nice and long, looking basically down, head in line with the upper back. Excellent. And really feel yourself lengthen from that arm, from the fingertips down to the toes. Perfect. Good. And we're going to do four more here. And three. And two. Keep those hips drawing together. And one. Good. Hands back down, knees back down, and we'll just do a couple of cat stretch, spine stretches again. If you do feel any, um, any pain in your lower back on this one, you can actually just do one limb at a time. So either one arm or one leg at a time. Okay, so that's your, your um, slightly lighter option there. So we'll start. We're releasing one hand forward, opposite leg back. So what we don't want is that, like, that leg to kick up too high. The lower back should stay relatively flat. And then we come back down each time. So we're exhaling, extending out, trying to touch the wall in front and behind. Inhaling and coming back down. And you'll notice because I'm pregnant, it looks like my uh, deep core muscles have dropped in this one. But I assure you they're odd. So make sure you turn them on before you extend. 
And the way to do that is to think like you're doing up a belt that's too tight for you. So do the belt up and then extend and reach. And then we'll start doing the opposite tucks. So again, with the hand that's on the floor, you've got most of the weight through the fingers. Opposite elbow to opposite knee. Excellent. And you're squeezing through the glute of the extending leg. Good, keep it up. So we're going to do another five here. Tighten that belt again. And three. And two. And one. All right, now we're going to go into swan prep. So, um, hands just underneath your forehead, still looking down, belly button in, and all we're going to do is just do a little lift and lower. Little lift and lower. So, I want you once again to think about hip bones pushing into the mat. We're still drawing our belly button in. Once again, shoulder mobility issues. You might even like to draw your elbows back a tiny bit if that feels a little bit better. So we're going to a little bit of back extension, but not too much. Keeping the spine nice and neutral. We're just gonna do three more. Two. Last one. Perfect. All right. Extending your arms out long. Legs are already long, so we're fine. We're looking down towards the mat once again. Belly button's drawing in. And I want you to lift one arm. A little bit of a stretch. Lift opposite leg. A little bit of a stretch. Coming back down. And then we're going to do the other side. Little lift, little stretch. And back down. So we're just gonna keep um, changing sides. What I want you to be mindful of though is what your lower back is doing. So we don't wanna lift so high that we start to sink into the mat. It's not about that. Once again, belly button in towards the spine. Doesn't matter how high you're lifting your leg and your arm. We're just working on those lateral slings of our body. So just challenging those really important systems in our posterior chain. And we'll just do one more each side. And resting. Okay team, so we have our elbows underneath our shoulders. Um, you can either Grip your hands together or take them out wide, up to you. Think of your elbows kind of like actively drawing back towards your hips as you do this. We also have a neutral spine, so it's super easy to want to sink into that belly. And we're going to try and draw it up slightly into your spine. We're going to point our toes and we're going to do little beats. So we're basically trying to click our heels together. Mine clearly don't. So just do your best. Remember, that's the first rule of Pilates. If you imagine that you're doing it, it's happening, right? So, pubic bone is pushing into the mat. Um, belly button is in towards the spine. Shoulders are drawing down, back towards your butt. And we're using those elbows to kind of really keep some nice active energy through our shoulders. Big stretch through tippy toes. We're feeling this in our butt, our hamstrings, our calves. We're gonna do 10 more seconds. Good, five, four, three, two, one. Keep your feet lifted. We're going into a little bit of swimming. So we're going up and down. So think of hip bone and leg where the movement's happening. So we don't wanna bend and scissor here. We wanna keep reaching those toes. Scissor up and down. 
Awesome. Starting to feel your lower back. Try and keep your feet a little bit lower or belly button in a little bit more. So ribs to hips, pushing up through those elbows. Good. We've got 10 more seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Good. Squeeze that butt. Three, two, one, and collapse. So the next set of exercises, we're going to try and utilise some of our um, at-home equipment as such to bring us some of our reformer style exercises. Um, so for this one, I'm going to use a little bit. So you could either use like a paper plate or a good old tea towel, and hopefully everyone's got a tea towel at home. So I actually prefer the tea towel on this one, um, particularly if I'm working um, or standing on tiles. Uh, so a scooter. If you are used to reformer and you can't get into a studio, which most of you can't right now, um, we'll bring your scooter at home. So basically, really tough glute activation exercise, or glute exercise I should say. So we're going to start with the feet hip distance apart. One foot is going to be on the tea towel, other foot firmly planted onto the floor. And then we're just going to bend at the hips, tilt to the hips, push your bottom out towards the back wall as you go. So we're bending at those knees. Um, you place your hands on your hips to start, and then we're just going to slide the back leg back all the way through the heel on the front leg. You want your toes lifted on this one. Um, now, given my stage of pregnancy, I'm only kind of limiting my depth to about 80% of where my body can go at the moment. Um, but if you can go deeper, perfect. Um, any hip issues, stay around my level here. So we're just sliding the back leg back. You should be feeling it in the glute of the front leg. Now a really good trick on this one is you've got to keep the arch of the front foot lifted. Slightly roll out onto the outside part of the foot. And when you do that, your knee's going to roll away just a little bit and then you'll feel that glute fire up. Which I can feel it, absolutely, I promise you. Good. So drop a little bit deeper if you can. Keep your chest nice and lifted. Hips are square. Watch that hip is rolling back. Perfect. We'll do three more here. Oh, it's burning. Two. And one. Awesome job. Okay, that's a tough warm-up if you want to call it a warm-up. So we're going to stick on the same leg now. And we're just going to do some scooter lunges. So we're going to take that back leg back, drop at the hips, drive up through that front leg, come forward. So all of the weight staying on the heel of the standing leg. And like any good lunge, you kind of just want to push your hips back as you drop down. Now, you might not want to go back too far for your first couple of extensions, particularly if you're on tiles like I am, and particularly if you've got the tea towel. So just start nice and light if you like, so nice and kind of high in the extensions, and then get your trust back, and then come up. So we add just the slight little pause at the bottom, and that way you have to kind of really engage through the heel to glute of the standing leg. And exhaling up. Good. Keep that arch nice and lifted. We've got two more here. And one. Beautiful. All right, quick shake. What's a set of scooter without pulses? I know I heard you ask. All right, pulses are short. We always say they're short. We'll see how short they are. So we're going down into the scooter lunge. Back leg is back. And then we are just going to pulse up and down. Up and down. Try not to roll the shoulders forward. You want to keep them nice and lifted. If you are feeling this one in your back, as you pulse, you can actually pulse down. Um, a little bit uh, further bending through the waist, flattening out through the back, but just make sure that the um, 
core stays on, that you're pulling those hip bones together. We're going to do 10 more, 10, 9, 8, drop a little bit deeper than me, good, 4, 3, 2, and 1, Ooh, out, up you come, good job, let's do the other leg now. So the next set of exercises, we're going to try and utilise some of our um, at-home equipment as such to bring us some of our reformer style exercises. Um, so for this one I'm going to use a little bit, so you could either use like a paper plate or a good old tea towel and hopefully everyone's got a tea towel at home. So I actually prefer the tea towel on this one, um, particularly if I'm working um, or standing on tiles. Uh, so a scooter. If you are used to reformer and you can't get into a studio, which most of you can't right now, um, we'll bring your scooter at home. So basically, really tough glute activation exercise, or glute exercise I should say. So we're going to start with the feet hip distance apart. One foot is going to be on the tea towel, other foot firmly planted onto the floor. And then we're just going to bend at the hips, tilt to the hips, push your bottom out towards the back wall as you go. So we're bending at those knees. Um, you place your hands on your hips to start, and then we're just going to slide the back leg back all the way through the heel on the front leg. You want your toes lifted on this one. Um, now, given my stage of pregnancy, I'm only kind of limiting my depth to about 80% of where my body can go at the moment. Um, but if you can go deeper, perfect. Um, any hip issues, stay around my level here. So we're just sliding the back leg back. You should be feeling it in the glute of the front leg. Now a really good trick on this one is you've got to keep the arch of the front foot lifted. Slightly roll out onto the outside part of the foot. And when you do that, your knee's going to roll away just a little bit and then you'll feel that glute fire up. Which I can feel it, absolutely, I promise you. Good. So drop a little bit deeper if you can. Keep your chest nice and lifted. Hips are square. Watch that hip is rolling back. Perfect. We'll do three more here. Oh, it's burning. Two. And one. Awesome job. Okay, that's a tough warm-up if you want to call it a warm-up. So we're going to stick on the same leg now. And we're just going to do some scooter lunges. So we're going to take that back leg back, drop at the hips, drive up through that front leg, come forward. So all of the weight staying on the heel of the standing leg. And like any good lunge, you kind of just want to push your hips back as you drop down. Now, you might not want to go back too far for your first couple of extensions, particularly if you're on tiles like I am, and particularly if you've got the tea towel. So just start nice and light if you like, so nice and kind of high in the extensions, and then get your trust back, and then come up. So we add just the slight little pause at the bottom, and that way you have to kind of really engage through the heel to glute of the standing leg. And exhaling up. Keep that arch nice and lifted. We've got two more here. And one. Beautiful. All right, quick shake. What's a set of scooter without pulses? I know I heard you ask. All right, pulses are short. We always say they're short. We'll see how short they are. So we're going down into the scooter lunge. Back leg is back. And then we are just going to pulse up and down. Up and down. Try not to roll the shoulders forward. You want to keep them nice and lifted. If you are feeling this one in your back, as you pulse, you can actually pulse down. Um, a little bit uh, further bending through the waist, flattening out through the back, but just make sure that the um, core stays on, that you're pulling those hip bones together. We're going to do 10 more, 10, 9, 8, 
Drop a little bit deep in the knee. Good. Four, three, two, and one. Ooh, out. Good, so again, we're utilizing um, home equipment, paper plates. For this one, you will need two. Um, Similarly uh, to other exercises where we use paper plates, you can use these towels as well. Um, so two paper plates on the ground. You're going to lay on your back. If you are on the mat, shuffle yourself down a little bit further so your body's kind of off the edge. And then your heels are just going on to those paper plates. You're just going to roll yourself back down, relax your shoulders. Weight through the heels and we'll just start warming up through the glutes and hamstrings first. So, so we're just going to lift the hips up to the ceiling and then drop those hips back down to the floor. So you want to squeeze through the glutes, relax through the arms, lift up as high as you can. So obviously my range is limited because I'm pregnant and you'll also notice that my belly is obviously dome because of the baby, which um, you don't want to see if you're not pregnant. So what you would be thinking about is kind of tucking your hips um, to your ribs at the top. Wonderful guys, so just keep the knees tracking straight, squeeze through the bottom, lift and lower. So either relaxing those arms or sometimes I like to just keep my hands on my hips. It's a bit of a reminder um, that my hips aren't swaying so it should be even squeeze through your glutes. Not too much weight through your arms. Your upper arms will take a little bit of the weight. Good. And now we're standing up the top and we're going to push one leg out, slide it along the ground, come back in. Hold the weight through that heel and then slide the other leg forward and back. Big, big glute squeeze to limit that hip drop and back in, and you're going to find, likely you'll have a weaker side, so one side may drop further than the other. Good, and then back in, and reset, squeeze through the glutes, your legs should be shaking, leg out, and in. Now, if you are cramping through your hamstrings, which is quite common in these bridge exercises, um, you can just do this one with a little external rotation of the knee out to the side, so it's going to require your glutes to work a little bit harder, but maybe a little bit less through the hamstring. One more on each side. Out, in, great. Drop those hips back down. Release out through that lower black back. Knee side to side. Great work, team. Hopefully your glutes and hamstrings are on fire. All right, we're just gonna do a little stretch for our glutes. So um, feet flat on the ground to start with. We're gonna cross one ankle over the opposite knee. Now for some people this might be enough, which is totally fine. You can stay here, push that knee away Keep those hip bones facing up towards the ceiling. If you need a little more of a stretch, we're going to make sure our lower back is connected to the mat. Draw that leg up into tabletop. We can thread our arms through and reach around the back of our thigh. Think of drawing that thigh in and then knee in opposite direction. So you're drawing in, pushing the opposite knee away, trying not to strain through your neck or shoulders and just holding it here. So you should feel a nice stretch through the glute of that um, bent knee side. Nice big breath in and out. And let's do one more in and out. Coming down and we'll do the opposite side. 